West Point Lake. It's uh, it's a lake that I've never fished for before. And, and, and you know, the invitationals for me overall are an event that uh, I get to jump in and they're sort of like opens for me. You know, I, I, I enjoy competing at that level. I love putting them in the live well sometimes, and especially in the pre-spawn, it's just fun. You know, you go to a different lake, you switch it up. Um, in practice overall, only having, just just because I jumped in this tournament and it's on the heels of Santee Cooper, which, you know, I won, I took a day and a half off, spent time with the family, sort of kicked back a little bit. Um, I came into this event sort of event sort of like with a mindset of like, hey, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Not necessarily what the fish are telling me to do, if I'll give you that much, my mind says like I love skipping docks, like I do. Like I love skipping docks, and and, and I love cranking, um, picking up a DT6 and just going down the bank. And so to me, like this was a great opportunity to have fun and uh, no pressure, no points in the line, and and just go out there and sort of dial this place in. After practice, you know, I'm feeling feeling pretty good. You know, I get a, uh, I, I, I feel like I can put about three or four rods in the deck. Um, I love skipping a chatterbait around docks, the freeloader. It's just something that. I've done it for a long time and, and uh, it catches big pre-spawners and uh, this tournament really for, from just my little bit of time on the lake it definitely seemed like it was going to be um, the tournament of haves and have nots like it's all about one big large mouth or two big large mouths so you get to spend the majority of your tournament trying to get one or two big large mouth bites because that's going to be the difference maker so the only way that I feel like I know how to do that right now I had maybe like six or eight, 10 bites on docks on, on a chatterbait. And so like, I felt like that had the best chance to produce a couple big large mouth. And it was something that I love to do. So spotted bass are definitely a limit filler. So I got to catch a few of those. You know, if you can catch those two plus pound spotted bass, you're gonna put yourself in a good position in this tournament. My mindset starting off the tournament, I run into um, a, a pretty popular creek, crank this bridge, throwing you a DT6 and a flat side and rotating through a couple of different crankbaits. And I catch a fish pretty quickly. Um, catch a, you know, a, a, just a pound and a half large mouth. Not a big one, but just definitely a starter to the day. Um, as the day sort of goes on and progresses, um, you know, I'm, I'll catch one, uh, you know, one more fish cranking, lose a decent fish cranking. Uh, and, and so I'm just sort of trying to bebop around. Like I'm, with the limited amount of practice, you know, this event is unique because it's an event that I didn't really get a chance to practice long, a long period for. So about right about a day and a half. And so um, I ran around the lake a lot and I thought in my mind, like I could go out here and just run around, everything looked good, the water's low. And typically when you have the water low, it's a little bit easier to look at like, okay, Docks, rocks, laydowns, and run a pattern. But the big key with that is you have to get a clue. And um, as sort of the day is progressing, I, I jump out offshore, fish a little bit of brush, not really going really well for me. Um, I sh jump back shallow, fish docks. And, and I'll be honest with you, I don't get really hard headed overall, but I felt like I was a little bit hard headed on the large mouth. In, in tournaments like this, I'm, I'm fishing like, I'm just trying to get a clue. If I get a one bite, one bite, fish a rock bank, fish a bridge, fish, fish a, a tree, do, you know, fish offshore, fish a shoal, fish a point. If I get one bite doing something like that, then I can run it throughout the lake. I feel like very much so it's a pattern lake. And it just sort of never transpired. So getting into the uh the the being late okay so i zeroed for this event zero day number one zero um so i'm fishing and it's pouring down rain and i'm sitting there and in my mind i'm doing it 3 30. um and i'm sitting there and i'm looking at my clock and i'm back up forth i'm dragging around and i look down and i'm like let me just check that again so i look at my text because you know, especially the BPT, things have been going on. Like, I, you know, there's lines out. It's a little bit different. Um, I look at my phone and I and I realized that it was I was doing it at 3:15. Yeah, not the uh, not the best best feeling in the world. Didn't have but about eight and three quarter pounds. So I come running in and I'm I'm about nine minutes late. I um, might have been close to ten. And you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, gosh dang. Um, you know, it, it's tough. This, this is the thing, I, I, and I wanted to bring this into a video because of this. You, no one's perfect. 
No one's perfect. No one's ever, you know, going to always make the perfect decisions all the time. And over the last few years, I've been very grateful and, and blessed with some great events. Um, but in this scenario, I, I made a mistake. You know, I didn't catch them, you know, I didn't catch them day one. I didn't uh, generate the bites. And then I come in late. So I got double whammied. And, and so, but, but this is the reason why I wanted to talk about this. Because I think that it's so important for young anglers out there. But, but even myself as a veteran of the sport goes out there and, and some days it's just not my day. You know, and that's bass fishing. Not only did I catch them, but I came in late and, and, and got a big zero. And um, does it hurt? You know, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not, you never want to make a mistake. You never want to um, not catch them, period. But I'm, look, you know, you, you, you take it on the chin, you, you hats off to all the anglers that caught them, and, and you move on. Day number two of competition out here on West Point Lake. And, and as I got out there, I'm looking here, I'm thinking about it. And um, look, boats are running every which way. Things are, you know, running around, and, and, and I just sort of, in my mind, this is what it came down to. I, I decided to buy out, bow out of the competition, and I said, look, you know, I called Kevin Hunt, the tournament director, and I said, look, man, I, I just don't feel right, necessarily, negatively impacting another guy's tournament if I go and catch a four-pounder on a lay-down tree. And, you know, West Point is fishing pretty small. Um, or if I catch 18 pounds a day, I don't really get anything for it. I'm not fishing for points. I'm not trying to qualify for the BPT. I'm not trying to, to get a check for the most part. I mean, not saying I could have caught 22 pounds a day, um, but it was highly unlikely. I didn't want to negatively impact someone that was fishing for a chance. Now, also on top of that, you know, the last, um, the last month of February, I spent three, three days in my own bed. So um, getting the opportunity to come home a little early and uh, spend time with the family um, is important to me as well. Um, that's something that uh, you don't get to hear a lot about, but that's something that they, they make a huge sacrifice. So having four, three, four, five hours more with them um, is a lot for me in the tournament season. So that's sort of the rundown. You make mistakes. West Point didn't go my way, and that's okay. I took it on the chin, and, uh, and we go on to the next one. But what this does every single time, I'm telling y'all, and I've said this before, it motivates you to be better. On the heels of winning a tournament, everybody's human. You go out there, you put your head down, you go to work. And you're not gonna catch them every day. And um, that's just part of it. So for all those people that have had an, you know, came in a little bit late to a tournament, um, had, had, had an issue on that, and you know what I'm talking about, keep your head up, it's, uh, it's okay. There's always another tournament to be fished. Truly appreciate you all following along on the channel and we will see you on the next one.